My name's Adam Wilbur. I am a magician. I'm an author, inventor, and a speaker. And this whole idea of ideas worth sh sharing, I, I sort of, I mean, I do magic, right? I entertain. I got the E part of Ted down. So I really started thinking about what is this idea that I could share? And I thought the most personal thing that I could share with you is what changed my life. So let me start with a question. Uh, just by show of hands, who in this room believes that they know their purpose or have an understanding of what their purpose in life is? And it's totally fine to not raise your hand. Show of hands. Good. Very, very few. And that's one thing that I struggled with my whole life was everyone saying, oh, once you find your purpose, once you find your passion, everything will make sense. Everything will fall into place. And the question that was asked over and over when how do you find your purpose is, well, here, let's say you didn't have to worry about money. Money wasn't an issue. Well, what would you do? And that's almost an impossible question to answer, in my opinion, because we all do have to worry about money, right? So for me, the idea of how do you find your purpose really stems down to what's that one thing that you remember, the first thing that you remember truly loving? What's the one thing that's sort of been with you through your whole life? Now, maybe not in a professional manner. Maybe you like to draw, but you know you're never going to be a professional artist. Or maybe you like writing poetry, but you, you know you're not going to make a living doing that. Whatever that thing is, and I think everyone in the room has one thing, one thing that's really stuck with them, that is a good indicator of what your purpose is. So my whole goal here tonight, first and foremost, is to share my purpose, which is magic. I believe that sharing magic with strangers and soon-to-be new friends is my purpose. It's, I'm here to bring people together in a fun and in a, in a wondering kind of way. And it took me 30 years of my life to realize that once I could find that purpose and follow it and pursue it, then everything did fall into place. It was that really ironing out of what my purpose is. So with that said, I'm going to show you my all-time favorite trick. It uses three ropes, and let's get right into it. I need a few people to just sort of vouch for me, because I do understand it might be a little bit hard to trust a magician. I don't know why, but I've got three ropes. These are regular ropes, like you would find in any bedroom in America. <laughs> I know who my people are. Good. Okay. Perfect. We've got a long piece of rope. We've got a medium piece of rope, and we have a small piece. Sir, what's your name? David, great memory. Could you take a look at the long piece of rope for me? Make sure it doesn't stretch, come apart, no magnets, trap doors, just a piece of rope. Hi, ma'am. What's your name? Say it again. Thank you for helping. I'm not going to try on that, but thank you very much. Make sure that's a medium piece of rope. Sir, this is not a judge of your character. It's just a small piece of rope. Take a look at that one. Make sure there's no magnets. The ends are glued shut. That's just so they don't fray. But other than that, they're pretty standard pieces of rope. You're looking way too close, sir. You know why I let you examine that one? We don't use this one for the trick. Don't worry about that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm going to show you guys the difference between illusion and magic. Illusion is the uh, impression of something that's not real. And magic, magic is, to me, the most beautiful thing in the world. And the other thing is, without you guys here, there is no magic. See, I don't get to sit in my room and look in a mirror and go, how the heck did I do that? Right? Magic only exists in your brain. So without you, there is no magic. And that's what I think is really special about magic. It brings people together. So what I'd like to first show you is the illusion that these ropes are the same length. At this point, that's a terrible illusion. I think we can all agree to that. But if we bring the ends up to the top, we don't have to focus on the ends. We focus just on the middles. At this point, still not a good illusion because we can see the middles are different lengths. Here's where the illusion takes hold. If you take the long middle and you put that up, now if I came out of the case like this and said, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Adam Wilbur, I have three ropes the same length. It's a good illusion because you guys see six ends and three middles, your brain is going to connect the dots. A to B must be the same length. That's the illusion. You guys ready for my favorite part? As loud as you can, say yeah. One, two, three. Yeah! Oh, I love you guys. Here's the magic. We got to shake. First the ropes, then the magician. I know it. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. One snap, and the, ro the ropes actually become one, two, three pieces the same length. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, the one person that clapped. That's one, two, and three. Now, I do know what the problem is. You guys have two eyes. I'm using three ropes. It's an unfair advantage. So I'll get rid of one rope altogether. We'll focus just on the two pieces of rope. You know what? I really like this group. I think we're all friends now. I'm going to make this as easy as possible. We'll use one long piece of rope. 
Much better, much better. Thank you very much. I will say, in all honesty, the trick isn't in the ropes, the trick isn't in the hands, it's not even in the magician. The trick is in the ends. If we take the ends and we blow, watch what happens. We can blow the ends right off the rope. So we got ends with no rope and we got rope with no ends. All right, well, if the magician is confused, we need to backtrack, we take the ends, put them back on, blow again. We're back to the long piece. Thank you very much, thank you very much. I think most good magic tricks end the way they began. So I'd like to end this the way it began, which means I need to cut this into exactly even lengths. So that's about the middle. I'll use my imaginary invisible scissors. Picked them up at Walmart. That's one, two, and three pieces of rope, the exact same length, just like when we... Well, wait a minute, that's a lie. When we started, we had the illusion of three ropes the same length, but we all know the reality was a small, a medium, and a long. And it looked like that. One small, one medium, one long. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we've got a whole bunch of speakers to get through today, but I do want to give one piece of advice, maybe a little actionable step that you guys can try, and I do think this has the ability and the potential to change your life. And I can say that because I lived a pretty drifter life. Up until I was 30, I didn't accomplish much except give my dad a lot of gray hair, okay? And it was because I didn't have a direction, I didn't have a goal, and I didn't know that I had a purpose. But until I sat down and realized that magic was my purpose, and I'm not saying that your purpose has to be your profession. Your purpose is what you love, it's what you stand for, and it's the one thing that only you can give this world. For instance, when I create magic, I'm not the only magician in the world, but my take on magic, only I can give that to the world. So everything that you all in this room have, that one thing that's been with you your whole life, I believe it's your duty to share that with your loved ones, your family and your friends, and better yet, to strangers. Meet people with this purpose and this passion, and I promise you it will change your life in ways you'll never imagine. And I'm living proof of that. Just seven years ago, I was working dead-end jobs, making minimum wage, really struggling by. Fast forward seven years, I'm quite literally living the life of my dreams. I invent magic, I meet amazing people like you, and I get to do everything I want with one thing, my purpose, which is magic. So we're gonna end on a card trick because it's, a, it's almost an unwritten rule that if you're a magician, you have to do a card trick in a magic show. I gave a deck to someone. Could you hold the deck up and could you just verify, we're not in cahoots. I actually just said, you look trustworthy. Will you hold this for the entire show? You've been holding it ever since. Nobody's touched it. Perfect. So what I'm gonna show you is something uh, you probably didn't know, but I'm kind of a man of many talents. And this is my best one. People standing, you might want to sit down for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, that's not really it. I wish that was it. These are just, uh, I call these audience participation uh, trash bags, really. I'm just going to throw these in the audience because if I just pick people, they're going to think I was in cahoots. So the first one's coming out. If it comes near you, please catch it. Don't hurt yourself, though. Who got it? Did someone catch it? You've, get, you've got to be kidding me. Thank you very much. That's my show. Good night. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're going to make this work. Um, sir, could you just crumple that up and maybe get the water out of it? <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm a professional and I meant to do that. So this is part of the show. It's called misdirection. And I, now I owe you a drink as well. This is great. Uh, ma'am, since it ruined your drink, we'll, we'll ask you this. Ma'am, in a deck of cards, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Deb. Deb, that is correct. That's mentalism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deb, in a deck of cards, there are uh, red cards and there are black cards. Um, what color do you like? It's going to be up to you. Whatever color you say, that's the color we're going to use. When you have that color in mind, name it out loud. Red. Good choice. Out of the red cards, there are hearts and there are diamonds. Again, your choice. What would you like to use, hearts or diamonds? Diamonds. Just like a woman. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Now, what we're going to do here, I got another little ball. We're going to throw another one out. I'll go on this side. So, um... Maybe cover your drinks for this one. <laughs> Here we go, coming at you. Someone catch that? 
Oh, beautiful. What's your name, ma'am? Heather? Heather, nice to meet you. I'm Adam. Heather, she said diamonds. So out of diamonds, there are low cards, like ace through seven, and there are high cards, like eight through king. Do you want to use low or high? The low cards. Okay. I want you to make your mind completely blank. Wow, that was fast, Heather. Good. That was very good. <laughs> You've been to the bar. I like that. <laughs> Heather, I will say the number one most commonly named card is an ace. I don't want people leaving here going, everyone says ace. So I want you in your mind to go ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until you've landed on one. When you're definitive on one card and you're certain about it, please name it out loud. Are you positive? Okay. We're going to do one last one, and this is the most important one. i got to be honest about that. It'll be the first time I'm honest tonight. I'm going to try and get it way back here. So, again, let's just cover your drinks. Here we go. One, two, three. How'd I do? That's why I do magic, and I'm not on the Red Sox. Okay. Someone over there got it. Whoever's closest are digging. Oh, did you get it, ma'am? What's your name? Miriam? That's my middle name. Not really. That would be weird. Miriam, this is a very important question. Face up or face down? Face up. You're sure? That's pretty fair. What I love about magic is it truly brings people together. And when you can bring people together, whether it's in work or your family or relationships, that's when real magic happens. And I'll show you what I mean by real magic. You've been holding that deck of cards the whole time. Ma'am, you said red and then diamond. You said low and then three, and you said face up. Could you hold the deck up? Just bring it up to me, and I'll take it. Everyone will clap for you for being so trustworthy. Give her a big round of applause. I'm not sure if the people in the back will see this, but what I didn't tell everybody is I made one prediction. I turned one card. Every card is face up like you asked, but I changed just one before we started. Just one. You'll notice, right down near the middle, there's one card only going a different direction. Ladies and gentlemen, the three of diamonds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I did say magic is about bringing people together, and that's what I'd like to do. Everybody that's got a little piece of paper, could you come up and join me right in front of the stage here? Everyone come up if you got a piece of paper. You don't have to do much with it, just walk up with it. And as you do, start unfolding it. Sir, you might be a little soppy, but if you could just unfold the sop while it will be interesting. This is a new experience for me. Uh, ma'am, I'll have you stand right on this side, face the audience. Sir, you can stand right in the middle, and ma'am, you stand right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Hold your signs up for everyone to see, and you'll notice it said from the start, the three of diamonds. Thank you very much. My name's Adam Wilber. You guys have been awesome. Thank you very much. You guys can keep those little souvenirs for you. Awesome. So one final note, like I said, I would just ask that as you leave here and you go about your day or next week, really try and iron down what is that purpose? What is that one thing that you can share with the world to make it a better place that no one else can? Thanks so much. I'm Adam Wilber. Enjoy the rest of the night.